gentlemen, welcome inside the Commodore Ballroom where it is just about time to get the action started here for NEW14. It's this company's two-year anniversary show. Yes, two calendar years of Nation Extreme Wrestling. It has been our pleasure to bring the action to you over that time, and we thank you for joining us once again. My name is Justin Morissette, coming to you from the Neil O'Brien Broadcast booth here at the Commodore, and joining me once again back in the saddle is my commentary partner, Jordan Bowman. Jordan, we missed you in July. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Two years, 14 shows. What an incredible run for NEW that's looking to continue tonight. Of course, wrestling all about the big returns, and we've seen two already here this evening. Before this show even got started, not just you back on the table, of course, Jordan, but Scotty Sweater Vest picking up the microphone again as NEW's new ring announcer going forward, and that got the crowd happy in a hurry here at the Commodore. Meanwhile, we're seeing another big debut in the ring right now, and that is Stephen Crow. Rhinestone Cowboy. Another member of the Clandestine Society. As Michael Richard Blaze has been talking a big game for quite a while, ever since he made his debut in this company, back in fact, if I'm not mistaken, at Nat Bailey Stadium, NEW8 take me out to the brawl game. I tell you, every time we see Michael Richard Blaze, he's got another new member of the Clandestine Society. What is it about this guy? He's at least trying to get the ear of a new member, perhaps. We've seen him try to work his charismatic ways, his darkly charismatic ways, I should say, on the likes of Judas Icarus here in British Columbia. But the rhinestone cowboy, Stephen Crow, very much in lockstep with what MRB is putting down. Right now, however, it's MRB being put down by the Voros twins as Chris and Patrick are red hot out the gates in this one. This tag team match is basically influence versus influencers. Uh, I don't know whose cult I'm uh, more worried about, uh, the Clandestine Society or the Voros fandom. I honestly don't know what this crowd thinks of the Voros twins, really. They got a huge ovation as minor local celebrities, perhaps, during their entrance earlier this evening, but a lot of disparaging chants sent in their direction as well. Right now, they're firmly in control as either Chris or Patrick, I can never tell them apart, trying to put this one away early. Stephen Crow able to get the shoulder up. I got a trick for you, I've been studying. I, I know how to tell them apart. Patrick's got the blonde hair. Okay. And that is Chris wearing the pink shorts. Absolutely, yep. See, it's, it's not that tough. Fellas, I'm begging you to put a letter or something on those shorts. <laughs> I would love to know, but right now, it's Michael Richard Blaze on the attack once again. As he tries to find his footing here, not often we see the clandestine society, which also includes Taryn from Accounting, who will be in action later this evening. Interesting matchup for the clandestine society to go against a team that has such history as the Voros in working together. Not often we see this group on the back foot, but the Voros certainly have them reeling, though. Some questionable conduct right now from Stephen Crow on the outside. He'll skin the cat and send that other Voros twins fill into the outside. But Crowbridge there. Tag in. That's a tandem offense from the Clandestine Society. Michael Richard Blaze with the assist to his brother in arms right now. As Stephen Crow brings those knees down hard. I don't know what you call that, an assisted Meteora perhaps. Nearly put the match away right there. But one of the Voros twins gets a shoulder up at two. Call that painful looking for sure. Oh. The disrespect. This is Stephen Crow, first time we're getting a chance to see him here in NEW and uh, making an impression early. And honestly, if you only know these guys from their TikTok videos, Stephen Crow might be living the dream of a lot of people who find these guys on their phones every so often. Perhaps some people in this very audience who, as we've said, is notably split on this pair. Yeah, he's been looking for more uh, punches in the face as opposed to arm bars against the Moros here, so. Trying to, 
send a message. Guess you can't really film videos if you're all disfigured either. So. I'm sure you can. They're trying to put them on the shelf, not just in terms of wrestling, but in social media content creation as well. Entirely different audience if they're disfigured. It is a different audience. You but can't just there. hit somebody with a front. I mean, you can in certain matches, but not this one. We've seen them get that dumbbell of theirs involved in in-ring action as well a few times. As the Boros are throwing forearms right now, but cannot reach the corner. Both teams obviously looking to maybe make a name for themselves in this uh, in this match. We've got a hell of a tag team title match happening later on today. you got to imagine both these teams will be keeping a close eye on that. Absolutely. A big win in this opening match here at NEW14 could be just the ticket to number one contendership, perhaps, in the NEW Tag Division. And as you mentioned, that match coming up later this evening, a triple threat TLC between Illa Tribe reloaded and the new reigning champions, ULT, the Union of Lightning and Thunder, that's Max Benson and Casey Ferreira, who are quickly making a name for themselves. The Pacific Northwest! And speaking of quickly making a name for yourself, I think this crowd will remember Stephen Crow after a maneuver like that one. Wow. Stephen Crow obviously frustrated. That wasn't enough to put away uh, Patrick. Double underhook here. Devastating backbreaker from Steven Crow. Still not enough. You cannot question the resiliency of the Voros Twins. You do not build a following that large without sticking with it. And they are sticking in this match right now, much to the chagrin of the clandestine society as Michael Richard plays, comes right back in. Go with another double underhook, another backbreaker, an assist. Malfunction at the junction. Clandestine society's heads just collided. Combination Centon Missile Dropkick! It is match one and these people are going crazy here at the Commodore. Diving effort, and in comes Patrick. Out goes Chris. Off the top rope, double cross body takes down the clandestine society. out here throwing discus forearms just to add an insiguri to the head of Stephen Crow and now double offense from the Voros twins wow flatliner neckbreaker combination that took out both members of the clandestine society I'm telling you this is the big challenge for the clandestine society here if you want to establish yourselves in British Columbia especially as a tag team. Twin Falcon Arrows from the Moros Twins leads to twin counts from referee Mark Gager. But both Blaze and Crow get the shoulders up. Yeah, Justin, they may have kicked out, but they're in bad shape right now. Looking for a double team here on Blaze. It up by Crow. For a dragon screw, perhaps. No, what an impact. A series of kicks from Michael Richard plays a fourth one. And he will head to the corner for a quick tag to Stephen Crow. We saw one of the Boros twins escape this maneuver not long ago. No such luck for this twin, however. Devastating double team maneuver. A sit-down powerbomb and a neckbreaker nearly put that one away. See, Michael Richard Place is an excellent wrestler, but not necessarily a tag team specialist, and it showed right there. As soon as they had that pinfall, he should have been looking for Chris or Patrick to cut off that breakup of that pin. Cut off the breakup indeed. Instead, it's the Boros who are alive to continue the fight in this one.
pro. Doing a double chop to the chest. Great counter there, get out of, uh, get out of trouble. This is perhaps less a tree of woe than it is a tree of crow. As Stevens up top. And the double boots right to the chest. That had to hurt. We also would have accepted tree of yo. Big slide and drop kick from Crow to the outside. Oh my, oh, what are Blaise we going to see? Blaze looking to the opposite corner. Chris still stuck in that tree of Crow. Perhaps we will see. A cross ring senton from the savior himself. I think he might have got him with the back of his leg, Justin. That might have been a flipping guillotine leg drop. I cannot believe this match is still going. That had to be it right there. And even more shocked than me is Michael Richard plays himself. He may not have won the match there, but I guarantee you with that last move, he won some new converts to the he, clandestine he society. Absolutely That's impressive. Did. The last time we were in this building, Jordan, you and I saw all sorts of people lining up to join the Dark Order tonight. They're lining up to join the clandestine society indeed. What a copy of that book he's been reading. Line tag. We can sell it at the merch table. Stephen Crow now all alone. It's exactly where you don't want to be. In the ring with two Moros twins and no partner. Setting up. The Da Vinci Code. And surely that will do it. The Voros Twins get the pinfall! And what an opening match to get us started here in this one! Still a tremendous showing from the Clandestine Society. You have to believe they'll be back at tag team action in NEW at some point in the future. But with the experience that the Moros Twins have, it was just too much for them to overcome. Meanwhile, for the Clandestine Society, welcome to BC, boys.